Davos Sweeney is trying to compare DJU and Cade Klubnik to when Trevor Lawrence was there with DJU behind him. And on the broadcast, they made the point that I think anybody really watching this will understand. This is way more similar to when Trevor Lawrence was behind Kelly Bryan. And Kelly Bryan had about three or four games before everybody said, you know what, this is a championship-level roster. We need to put our best quarterback in. And they put Trevor Lawrence in, and they won the national championship. DJU's final statistics, 19 for 32, 209 yards and a touchdown, 13 carries for 28 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Listen, Cade Klubnik was out there for just one series, but if you were watching this game, I thought he looked far more explosive at the quarterback position. He just looked really better than DJU. While it was one drive, it was impressive, and I thought it was very noteworthy. It is noteworthy because you have a championship-level defense here. You play in the ACC. You should be printing yourself into that Final Four for the college football playoff. But the one thing that's going to hold you back for going up against the big boys, the Georgias, the Alabamas of the world, is quarterback play. You can't just sit back and wait till five and then run around and try to go off schedule and make plays. you got to be decisive. Three strep drops, balls out before the wide receiver even turns his head. Now, having said that, Kevin, they got a long way to work this out, and I think they want to work that out with DJ. But at the same time, if you can switch into somewhere later in the season, and I know it's hard to do. These guys got, you know, ad campaigns already out there. But if Uyunga Lele goes out and he is the number two quarterback, but they use him in run pass sets on like the goal line, watch out for this offense. And I know we're a long way off from doing that. But boy, if he still plays that team part, if he loses his job, let's probably say week six or week seven and make the move to Cade. You want to talk about if he's still engaged in that offense, that Cam Newton-like effect, watch out for Clemson. The potential, really, Kevin, is there. The thing, look, Cade is so explosive. I wouldn't be worried about DJU as the goal line back. You've got Will Shipley. You'll be fine in that respect here. This is the – so we just talked about the Georgia schedule, right, where they're basically going to be able to sleepwalk until November. Clemson's next game is Furman. All right. Then they're going to play La Tech at home. Should be no problem. We'll see what at Wake Forest is like. We have a couple of Wake games to try and figure out what this whole non-Sam Hartman era of football uh, is going to be for them. And maybe Sam Hartman is back. And at that point, that'll be a big game. After that is home versus NC State. Now, NC State did not cover themselves in glory in their game against East Carolina. Probably really should have lost that football game. But it's a rivalry game. It was week number one. You want to have your decision made going into that NC State game. Clemson has an ability, not all too different, Donnie, than Michigan, to have a quarterback battle happening while playing real meaningful football here. They need to know by October 1st if it's Kate Klubnik's team or not.